Welcome back to Dragon Claw. Today we are going to cover the CJRB Craig. I don't know if it's Craig or Crag. Uh, C R A G is the model. Uh, model number is the G1904. Um, I might, I just thought about that. I think it is probably pronounced Craig. I've been pronouncing it Craig for a while. <clears throat> um, so let's knock out some specs and then we'll talk about the other stuff. Uh, the CJRB Crag. The blade length overall just under three and a half at uh, yeah, 3.4, whatever it is. Frame length just under four and three quarter. So total length is just under eight and a quarter. Um, pretty decent spine on this thing. <clears throat> pretty thick blade. Uh, it's just under, you know, just over an eighth uh, of an inch. So decent spine, uh, which I, I, I would expect on a bigger knife. <clears throat> Unlike uh, the the Ethan Growl that I showed, Ethan Growl, I still can't, I still can't decide on how to pronounce it. Um, where you you saw a, I believe it was a slightly thicker spine, like literally one one hundredth of an inch. Um, but in, when you look at them, you know that spine looks more. Give it my other hand. Hopefully it'll show you. I'm just getting too close. Uh, the the blade thickness I don't know if it just fits better on the bigger blade uh, or how you want to say it but <clears throat> it just doesn't look as thick as the Ethan Grout uh, but it's just one one hundredth of an inch um, less thick weight six ounces um, a fairly light flipper for the size uh, steel is AR RPM 9 powder steel. I think you can see it right there. Yeah. Uh, which is a um, fairly new proprietary steel from CJRB. Um, so uh, it's a fairly good budget steel. Uh, I found a lot of info on knifenewsroom.com <clears throat> where they were talking about it. Um, so I'm completely plagiarizing from them, thanks to KnifeNewsroom.com. Uh, good budget steel, uh, easy to sharpen to a fine edge, hold an edge well, less likely to chip than the D2, uh, and HRC of somewhere between 59 and 61. So, um, again, thank you for Knife Newsroom for that data, because I was not familiar with AR RPM 9, uh, but I am now. Um, I got a little too in depth. I don't typically like to get too in depth on on steels and things like that, but uh, I couldn't help myself. I fell down a rabbit hole, um, which some of you can relate, <coughs> Bobby. Um, so carbon fiber handle, uh, as you can see, I keep kind of flipping it here, and you can see all the cool uh, graphics, if you will, for lack of a better whatever, uh, on that handle from uh, from the carbon fiber. <coughs> A little dirt there. Uh, anyways, back to the blade. Uh, clever uh, or cleaver? Uh, they call it cleaver. Um, I think cleaver is getting a little overused nowadays. Um, I I see this more of a, almost re reverse tanto, if you will. Um, <clears throat> but because of that thickness, yeah, I can see them calling it the cleaver just because of that that thickness there. Um, but just it kind of screams more of a, a, a big uh, reverse top toe. Um, let's see what else. Uh, low profile clip, which I love. Um, big fan. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, big fan of those low pro profile clips. Um, uh, let's see, PVD coating. Um, I've mentioned that before, I believe, probably on uh, one of my uh, Kershaw Blurs, I think. 
um, flat grind. Um, I've showed you grinds before. It's really hard to see the grinds. Uh, I do my best to kind of show you. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll find a really good way of showing you. Other than drawing, which I've sh I did in one of my other videos just to show you the different kind of grinds that are out there. Um, so flat grind. Um, what else? Uh, a reversible clip. So pocket clip. So I've got pocket clip mounted on this side. If you flip it over, you'll see I've got holes for a reversed um, pocket clip. Uh, and when I say reverse, I'm talking blade forward and back, not up or down. <clears throat> Some when you see reverse clips, um, it'll go from one side to the other, which is blade up or down, um, versus one side or the other, which is blade forward or back in your pocket. <clears throat> so this is a reversible blade forward or back. Um, the overall look, I just, that's what kind of drew me to this thing, was the overall look. Um, you know, the blacked out um, carbon fiber, um, the uh, stainless steel standoffs, really sharp, really pop. Um, the aluminum uh, pivot shoulder, just, of course they had to go red, which just it sets this thing off. I mean, they needed they needed that little bit of, of color. And what color on all that black and a little bit of silver than a little bit of red. <clears throat> so, um, and as you can see, I mentioned I think in my Ethan Growl video was uh, you, know, you can usually tell when you have a uh, ball bearing pivot, and these are one of them that you can just tell. Uh, yep, yeah, ball bearing, no doubt. Um, Let's see. Um, I miss the thumb studs. So, uh, again, if you've seen some of my videos, you know I love my thumb studs. Uh, and I like the dual thumb studs for my left handed uh, brothers and sisters out there. So, uh, I miss the thumb studs, but that's okay. Uh, in this scenario, I, I do like the flipper, uh, works really well. Um, let's see, one of the other things about this, uh, no jimping anywhere, which, damn, not a big deal, uh, you know, the, the back of the spine, um, there's no swedge or anything like that, so, you know, you know, no edge here towards the tips, so there's no real concern about your thumb going forward on this, on this, um, spine so I guess really would be superfluous on there <clears throat> however uh, I'm a big fan of jimping on the liner lock which there is not uh, liner lock is um, decent uh, but could use a little jimping the way they've done this uh, it has some exposure as you can see so I can grab that fairly easily with my thumb <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but uh, they curved this. They, I don't know if they just made it more ergonomic or what. But they really curved that liner lock. Uh, I assume so it doesn't grab your thumb so bad, but you want that. So I was kind of a little thrown off. They shouldn't have uh, rounded that off, that edge. Uh, it would have, you would have been able to grab it a little bit easier. Um, it's decent, but they could have been a little bit better. If you can do that, throw a little jimping on it, and it'd been fine. Or don't do that and leave a, a harder edge, and you would have gotten it better. Um, let's see. Um, another thing that's probably hard to see is the little indentation there. Um, so, it ergonomically, your thumb fits there really well. And I mentioned there's no jimping, so that kind of thumb rest right there is pretty important. Um, one of the things I am not a fan of is uh, the overpronounced uh, choil, coil, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think I call it ch uh, coil a lot, but it's, I think, technically cho choil. 
Um, I'm not a fan there. Um, some will, will say that the reason for the, the bigger choil is you can actually use it as a uh, finger hole, which I do not like. Um, you know, as you can see, look how there's actually a little bit of overhang on my finger on that blade. So just one long wrong move on a sharp blade and I'm going to cut myself. Um, and even if it's not intended to do that, um, but I'll say most are, some are, uh, if it's, even if it's not intended to do that, you kind of want to put your finger there because that's what it looks like. It's what it kind of feels like. Um, so you have a tendency to grab it like that, which I do, I'm not a fan of. So, um, let's see. Overall, really good cutter. Uh, and although it's a pretty good size uh, knife here uh, and a cleaver, um, I, I think it makes for good EDC. Um, I, I've got a couple cleavers that I use as EDCs. Uh, Buckshot, which I've done a video on before. Um, although, again, not a huge fan of being called in a chopper or a, a cleaver, but well, it is what it is. Um, but really great looking knife, very functional. A um, bit sharper than some of the other ones I've gotten recently, which is good. Um, still needs sharpen though, which is kind of typical from the manufacturer unless you go with a, a really high-end knife. Um, even some of your not so uh, high-end knives, like your, your lower end Kershaws, um, your, you know, I'll call it, uh, if you've seen my other videos, inexpensive uh, knives. Uh, some of those are still very sharp, so um, this one still can use a little bit more of a sharpening out of the box, but um, again, kind of to be expected. So that's all I've got today. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming by, and have a good one. Bye.